Hey guys, Mac Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our 10 millimeter ballistic gel block test series. And today we're taking a look at the Horner D 200 grain XTP bullet. And uh, this is a, a lead core copper jacketed uh, hollow point bullet. And uh, this thing is a beast. Uh, it, it is a workhorse in 10 millimeter. And uh, so we're gonna take a look at this thing in the gel and show you exactly what it does. We'll have a spreadsheet coming up at the end of the video with all the ballistic data, the velocities, the penetration, the expansion, uh, weight retention, all that stuff will be in the spreadsheet. So hang around toward the end of the video for, for that in the slideshow. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, before we turn around and take a look at the loading, I've got a couple of other quick notes. So right up here, there's a button. And if you hover over that and click it, it's going to open up a, a page with a link to KentuckyRangetime.com. That's our affiliate partner website. And it's just a, a list uh, of uh, banners with all of our affiliate partners listed out on it. There's, uh, I think there's actually right at 100 partners right now. And uh, if you click on any of those partners and go to their homepage and do any shopping at all there, the page will make a small commission on that. And that is what we uh, use to help offset the cost of the bullets and the gel block and the powder and all the other stuff that, that uh, it takes to keep these gel block tests going. So would appreciate if you get a chance to do that. Companies on there like Magpul and Natchez and Mid-South Shooting Supply, Shields, uh, US Optics, uh, Alien Gear Holsters, Bear Archery, Raven, uh, Crossbows, uh, gosh, who else on there? Browning Camping Supplies, um, Sig Sauer, uh, Smith & Wesson uh, Merchandise Store, uh, Khaki Industries, Aero Precision, Ballistic Advantage, uh, Stag Arms, uh, just uh, uh, Fix-It Sticks is on there, Pro Ears. I mean, uh, everything to do. It's, it's hunting and outdoors and survival type stuff. So a uh, hundred different companies. So chances are you probably shop with eight or 10 of these companies already. And uh, so go check them out and would appreciate if you use those links. Uh, also, we are sharing affiliate links over on X, formerly known as Twitter, at our KRT Daily Deals page. So if, you, if you're on Twitter, go check that out and give them a follow. And we also cross post a lot of those specials on the Gun Deals community page on X. So go check that out as well. So here's a look at the loading on this one. And uh, I, I mentioned in one of my previous videos, accurate number seven and accurate number nine are a couple of my my go-to powders in 10 millimeter. And for the bigger, heavier bullets, accurate number nine is, is usually where I end up landing. So uh, we've got accurate number nine, we've got Magnum CCI, CCI Magnum large pistol primers. These are the number 350 primers. And of course the XTP bullet. Uh, this is a 0 0.400 inch diameter bullet and uh, 200 grain. Here is a look at this bullet. This gives you an idea. There is a lot of bullet down in this case. and. Uh, if you saw the uh, the Maker 140 grain uh, test, it actually was the first test we did in this series. That bullet was 140 grain and actually was almost as far down in the case as what this 200 grain lead core bullet is. That's just a, a good idea of the difference uh, in volume, uh, how much less volume or how much more volume an, an all copper bullet will take up in the case versus a lead core bullet. So. Uh, and there is a little note here. My, my seating dies uh, do collapse up this hollow point just a little bit uh, when, when I'm seating this bullet in here. But as you'll see from the gel block test here in a few minutes, it really doesn't have a lot of impact on how this bullet functions. So uh, don't forget, coming up after the, at the end of the video is our spreadsheet with all of our data on it. This will be up in the slideshow. I think I've got 10 or 15 seconds on this slide, so you'll have time to digest it. Or if you want to dig into it a little bit deeper, you can always hit the pause button on it and crunch through them numbers as much as you want. Load data is also on there. This is 13.2 grains of accurate number nine. And uh, the AOL, the trim length, uh, the brass, everything's listed on that. Even the uh, .199 G1 uh, ballistic coefficient is listed. Uh, so I'm trying to get as much data in these spreadsheets as I can, uh, including the, the ballistic coefficients on these bullets. So uh, if you do want to plug this into uh, a ballistic app, you know, you've got everything you need there to actually see what this bullet's going to do downrange. Hey, 
Hey guys, back at Kentucky Range Time and <laughs> fighting off the the tropical weather that we're having here in Kentucky uh, this week. It's it's been either raining or, or 90 degrees, and uh, the the combinations just made the humidity go through the roof. And uh, anyway, but we'll deal with that. Uh, today we're doing some more ballistic gel block testing, and we're going to be taking a look at the Hornady 200 grain XTP bullet. And uh, this bullet should give us some some good expansion and some, some nice penetration carrying a, a 200 grains of weight uh, down through the gel block. Uh, we've got gel block set up out here at 10 yards. I've got a brand spanking new block that I've put a couple of rounds into the other end of it and I've got that turned around so we've got a clean end to see the wound track from these XTPs. And uh, uh, the firearm we're gonna be using today is the Glock 20 and uh, this is uh, the Gen 4. Normally has a 4.3 inch barrel and I've got the factory barrel swapped out for a Storm Lake barrel because I do shoot cast bullets in this gun as well. And I do not want to shoot those through the factory barrel. And we'll be testing in the 4.3 inch barrel and I also have a six inch Wolf uh, replacement barrel, drop in replacement barrel for this as well. So we're gonna be running, uh, running this same rounds through two different barrel lengths. Uh, we'll be getting velocities on the Garmin We'll be doing at least one shot in the gel block to get a good catch, and we'll be putting at least a minimum of one more shot in the backstop, possibly two with these XTPs, um, to get a, a better baseline velocity average on these. So, uh, all right, let's get started. So actually, I'll just be running two of these. I've got, I've got several of these loaded up, but I actually have two different powder charges here. Uh, I have 10 with a three tenths less powder charge. And, and I have these five, I only have five of these uh, with the 13.5 uh, grains of AA number nine. The other ones are 13.2 grains. So just to make sure we keep everything correct, I'm gonna shoot uh, one end of the gel and one end of the backstop and with each of the two barrels. That way we get good good numbers here to look at. All right, round one end of the gel. Velocity was 1266. Let me go make sure I got the catch on that one. All right, so we did get the catch. Uh, it doesn't look like your standard XTP entry wound down there. And uh, that's kind of what had me confused there a little bit. So this one's going to the backstop. stops at 40 yards and I had picked out a little tiny rock down there and I actually just made it just uh, disappear. Turned to dust. All right, so changing barrels, confirmed that the chamber was empty, dropped the hammer, trigger, and then we can release this slide. All right, there we go. So next two rounds. Yep, let's reset the Garmin here. And actually, let's recap. So uh, our two-shot average velocity was 1269.1. Standard deviation was 2.9. Kinetic energy of 646.6 foot per second, or foot pounds. Ignore the foot pounds I just gave you on the previous shot. Uh, I had 180 grains topped in there instead of 200 grains on the bullet weight. Uh, 180 is the next test we're gonna do. So I was a little bit ahead of myself there. So I'll change that and the foot pounds of energy will be correct in the spreadsheet later. All right, guys, so entry for shot one with the 4.3 inch barrel is right here. Looks like we've got expansion uh, starting here pretty good, about an inch and a half. 
uh, we get modest expansion. We got a decent uh, permanent wound channel down through here. This bullet rides right through this mess from the other bullet and uh, goes into straight line penetration down here around 11 inches. And then we were sitting down here at 21 inches for overall penetration. And take a look at that bullet. Looks like we might be uh, about to get some separation from the, uh, the jacket and the lead core on this. And I do already have it changed for the, the six inch barrel. All right, first one's going in the gel block. All right. Looks like a pretty good catch right down the center for that one. So let's go ahead and put this one in the backstop. Two shot average velocity of 1,347.5 foot per second. Standard deviation of uno, one foot per second. Standard deviation on those two shots. Kinetic energy of 805 foot pounds. And I thought the foot pounds on the early one when I called it off looked a little bit low, but uh, it, it was the weight I had it typed in 20 grains light. So uh, 805 is, is much closer to where this thing should run. So, uh, and I will say this, this is really close to the barrel amp that comes in the factory Glock, Glock 40, uh, the 10 millimeter long slide. So if you go from the 20 up to the 40, you can expect a pretty decent little velocity jump and uh, an increase in your foot pounds of energy. All right, let's go take a look at this catch. All right, guys, so uh, wound track from the six inch barrel starts right here. We get some nice expansion going on here by about an inch, inch and a half. And we got a decent permanent wound channel down through here, uh, probably down to about nine and a half inches. And we got some lead fragments coming off. Uh, we continue on down, we're shedding some lead more down here around 15 and a half, more lead fragments around 18 and 19 and a half. And Final penetration on this bullet, I'm gonna call this at 25 and, uh, or 24 and three quarter inches. You can take a look at out here. We got some really nice expansion out of this bullet. Um, just a, a really nice, a really nice profile uh, for this 200 grain. Penetration was nice, expansion was nice. This, this is a nice bullet around this 10 millimeter here, guys. All right, guys, so we got these things dug out and uh, Here's what we've come up with. So uh, this is the 4.6 inch barrel and this is the six inch barrel. And uh, you can see that a little extra velocity on the six inch barrel has uh, uh, mustering this bullet back just a little bit deeper right here. And, uh, but this is a, a really nice, <laughs> just a really nice mushroom head on this thing. Uh, just exactly what we'd expect from from uh, from these XTP bullets, and it's what we get in XTP bullets in just about everything that we test them in. So, uh, uh, some numbers here, real quick, off the spreadsheet. Velocity on the 4.6 inch was 1269, 715 foot pounds of energy. Standard deviation was 2.9. Uh, Expansion was to 0.637 inches or 59%. Weight retention on a 200 gram bullet was 199.4. And I will say that there might be, I think you can see it here on some of these. There's a little bit of gel curled up in the, in the pedals on this thing. So uh, the weight that I, uh, that I have down on the paper is exactly what it weighed when I put it on the scale. So there is probably a couple of grains of, uh, of, of gel trapped in there, but basically for a 200 grain bullet, this, this bullet almost retained 100% of its original weight, which is pretty impressive. And penetration on this bullet was 21 inches. Coming over here to the six inch barrel, 1,348 foot per second for 806 foot pounds of energy, standard deviation of one foot per second. 
uh, expansion to 0.711 or 78% expansion and uh, weight retention was 184.4 grains of 200 which puts it at 92.2% and guys this bullet drove in to 24 and 3 quarter inches of penetration so 806 foot pounds 20 almost 25 inches of penetration this is a this is a nice bullet um, so the, the 135 grain and the 200 grain are the two bullets that I actually carry in my Glock 20 if I'm carrying that gun. Uh, typically, it is this 200 grain bullet that I'm carrying. So, uh, you know, it's just a, a really nice performance, uh, uh, the really consistent XTP performance that we're used to seeing out of, out of the Hornady's XTP bullets. And uh, these things just did uh, an excellent job. This XTP is living up to its reputation. Um, uh, I mentioned in the range portion of one of the videos, I don't know if it's this one or one of the other 10 millimeter videos I did the other day, that, that this Glock 20 that I'm firing these out of is set up for 100 yards. Uh, the, the, the iron sights that are on this, this gun are a set of Trigicons. And when I first installed this, uh, this bullet was running high at, um, at 100 yards, and I reached out the Trigicon, and they sent me the right high sight to... Uh, to bring this bullet down to where I would be on target at 100 yards. That way I could, I could do some, uh, some uh, calculations on range charts to see what this is going to do. And that sounds like a long way out, but uh, so with my side height, I'm, I'm a dead on hold at 100 yards. Uh, anything inside of that, I'm going to be running like an inch and a half high and then out to like 120, 130 yards, I'm only hitting a few inches low. And there is a ballistics chart coming up here after this that you can actually look at those numbers on. Uh, believe it or not, this 200 grain bullet is still carrying over 550 foot pounds of energy at 100 yards. So uh, that is a, a very uh, a very nice energy number and quite capable of taking uh, deer sized targets out to 100 yards. If you're comfortable taking a shot at 100, then the bullet will actually get the job done when it gets there. So. Uh, uh, and, and I think even out to like 250 yards, this thing's still carrying like uh, maybe 300 foot pounds of energy or something, uh, something crazy though. So anyway, guys, that's it. Uh, like I mentioned before, if you've got any questions, uh, leave those in the comments. I'll be glad to hear those. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, please subscribe. Uh, please leave me a comment and please share my videos. I mean, uh, all those metrics, uh, signal to YouTube that a video was worth keeping up on the home page and on the suggested uh, uh, videos page a lot longer. And, and actually that really does help the video get a lot of traction and, and, and do really well. So would appreciate if you guys could do those. And don't forget to check out the affiliate links up here for any of your shopping needs. And as always guys, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.